And uh, right now, it's lovely to welcome my next guest into the studio, and it's Councillor Peter Rankin, and Peter is leader of Preston City Council. So, Peter, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Huey. And a very happy new year. And a happy new year to you and to all your listeners. And when we met back in December, we were looking back over 2013 and uh, in many respects, I think I, I think we did agree that it was the <laughs> the year of the bus station. And uh, even now in 2014, I mean, I saw an article yesterday in yesterday's Independent about Preston bus station. So the the bus station still is out there in the uh, public eye. But I, I was kind of wondering in 2014 if if it should be the nemesis for you, if that's the right word to use. What is going to be 2014, do you think, Peter? What's going to be the uh, main feature of the year in regards to Preston and Preston City Council? Well, I think uh, 2014 is going to be a, a very difficult year for for everybody. Um, the economy supposedly is looking up. Um, and uh, the other week when I was in London, I, I just thought... London's like a different country. It really is mm. so very different down there. And politicians tend to be so London-centric. Yes. All their pronouncements, anything they say about uh, the con economy getting better, people getting jobs, it seems to apply to London and the South East. And then you look at the rest of the country, really, we're not still not doing that well. And uh, that that's for me is a big concern that uh, you know that the uh, that the so-called um, uh, improvement in the economy uh, will not affect people in Preston. I, I, de I dearly hope it will do, and uh, you know the council is is trying to uh, to do what it can to to say uh, look press to employers and businesses look Preston is a good place to to open a business. So. Mm. And and of course, last year uh, or towards the end of the year, I mean, uh, and we mentioned it last time we met. I mean, we 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 have such iconic places here in Preston that's uh, you know tourists come along to visit. We've got the Harris Museum, we've got Avenham Park, and and businesses were told uh, do want to relocate into Preston because of the opportunities here. But I do know what you mean about that. It is sometimes difficult to today. Uh, we're told that we've had the best um, car sales in the last 12 months that we've had for five years but then when you look to the people that you meet every day and people who are it is sometimes difficult to actually be able to see that uh, you know things are improving how, how will it impact though on the council the fact that the government say that we've got 25 billion uh, cuts ahead in public services, 12 billion in, in welfare, and particularly that they're hoping to achieve savings by targeting housing benefits for under 25s. Now, surely figures like this are going to impact greatly on the work and, the, you know, the support that Preston Council can give to people living in Preston. Yes, I think the council is, is very limited in what it can do. Um, I mean, just comment on, uh, Proposed cuts from uh, from Osborne that Osborne announced. I mean, he was talking about if the Conservatives get back as as a government, and uh, it's interesting that uh, his Liberal coalition colleagues are falling out with him about that yes. because they feel. And um, I, do, I, do, I do praise them for this. That they uh, they have said the poor and vulnerable have had enough in terms of in terms of cuts. And it's it's such a cynical thing to do to to uh, to attack the young, because uh, of course if you look at voting patterns, it tends to be older people who vote. vote. I dearly wish young people would vote. I dearly wish they would. Be, I mean, I'm often asked at the doorstep by some, somebody in their in their twenty in their twenties with a with a young child. Why should I vote? You're all the same. We're not all the same, and you know it. Young people's votes would matter because, believe me, government would not uh, propose cuts like that if they knew that the uh, people in their 20s and 30s were going to go out there in their hordes and vote. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it really is very, very cynical. And, of course, he also announced, we, we don't, uh, I think this was Cameron a couple of days ago, announced 
um, uh, the, the, the so-called triple lock on on uh, on pensions, um, protecting pensions, knowing that well, <laughs> pensioners tend to be the people who vote. Oh, yes, it's, it's all very cynical and and very disheartening. Um, I think just to say something more about young people, uh, I, I really do feel that. Um, I mean, my my two uh, my two daughters. They both work very very hard. They work. Uh, I mean, my younger one worked all through Christmas. Uh, sometimes she works forty or fifty hours a week. Young people work tremendously hard mm. when they can, when they can get a job. But jobs are few and far between sometimes, particularly in the north of England. Uh, and to hear. Uh, Conservative government spokesman talking, or as I heard yesterday, an MP talking about, well, we need to cut housing benefit to uh, young people to encourage them to work. Well, you know, if there aren't jobs there, you're going to make them homeless, and how are they going to get a job if they're homeless? So sorry, Huey, I, I was just getting on a bit of a bandwagon there, but I do feel strongly about well, that. N- n- no, I mean, w- what I was going to ask is when councils know that these proposals are coming forward, how, how on earth do you try to prepare to meet the needs of the people within the city? Well, it, as, I, as I say, it is, it is difficult for us. But one of the things, although we're facing um, monumental cuts, over the next two to three years, we what we want to do is is do what we can to to protect our welfare advice service, because we feel that if people are being drastically affected mm. by benefits cuts, they need to know what financial help there is out there, and our, our benefits. Um, our welfare uh, advice staff can give that help and can advise them as to where there are uh, emergency um, emergency funds available to support them. This sort of thing. Uh, also, uh, we're uh, hoping it's taken quite a long time to get it up and running, but we we will be launching this year uh, a new credit union and in, in so Preston. In in Preston, and we think that can offer. Uh, a tremendously better alternative to payday yes. lenders who an awful lot of people who are low paid uh, do tend to rely quite a lot on the payday lenders who charge a very falling, high yes, uh, interest, interest rates. Rate. We think uh, a credit union could be of tremendous benefit to uh, to working people. Um, they are very, very successful in Ireland, where uh, where I come from. I don't know why they aren't quite so successful uh, in uh, in this country. Preston has had one in the past. Um, it, uh, I think it. I'm not quite sure what happened, but mm. it uh, it ceased to exist about t- ten years ago or so. So we're trying to uh, to get another one off the ground. And I think uh, I know there's quite a successful one over in Blackpool, and I think maybe it is because people often don't know about them. Maybe so. Maybe it yeah. is down, and and particularly in the climate that we're in at the moment, as you say, that somebody who has to go along and get money with an extortionate uh, interest rate to pay back, then that really is terrible because that just uh, impacts and compounds the problems that the people already have. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so that's something then. Hopefully, that uh, will be happening in 2014. That's right. Yes, uh, I mean, generally we're, we are looking at uh, social justice and how we can support uh, those in society who are being uh, disproportionately affected by by government cuts. Mm. Um, it's interesting that um, you know the rich seem to be left. But it's the, the the poor and the working poor who are most affected by government cuts. So, what we're trying to do in our small way is is uh, direct our policies and our support in in that direction. And in in 2014, there was also the um, consultation with uh, local people about 
uh, preferred options for Preston City Council. So is, is that something else? I mean, I, I know one of the concerns in 2011, uh, and I interviewed one of your colleagues about it, is the number of betting shops that we now have in the city. Uh, that is quite a concern again for people who maybe don't have much money. The uh, attraction of betting shops is that something that will be on high on the agenda in 2014? Well, um, we've um, we've passed a notice of motion in council against the proliferation of betting shops, in particular the the um, the uh, the the uh, uh, betting terminals, the uh, the ones where you can actually feed in up to four hundred pounds of money. in just yes. a few minutes and yes. lose that amount of money. And along with a number of other authorities, we uh, we have said to government, look, you you must ban those machines, and also you must allow us, uh, allow the planning uh, people uh, to uh, be able to stop uh, betting shops appearing. Because do you know the government actually changed the law? Uh, last year so that betting shops don't need to ask for planning permission if a empty shop for example um, can't attract uh, a retail uh, a retailer then uh, they can they can give it over to uh, to a, to a betting shop uh, without asking for for uh, planning permission and the government's view is, well, it's better to have a betting shop than an empty shop. Well, I'm not sure. When you've got 27 betting shops in Preston, as we have, I think, I think that's more than enough, really. Mm. And so there's there's no legislation that curbs the amount of betting shops then within within an area or within you no. know. They no, no, this is this is the absurdity because people think, oh, well, the council should do something about it. They should do something, um, um, but. You know, our hands are tied uh, as a council because right. national government has made it impossible to refuse planning permission. And I, I believe, I understand there is pressure from various councils on government at the moment that they should bring in some kind of legislation that would allow councils to regulate the number of shops opening to betting shops. Yes, yes, I think uh, we're trying to put pressure on government to change their minds on that. So the consultation that took place, I think it was uh, prior to Christmas, looking at the future for Preston City Council, how will that go forward now? Well, I think you're talking about the um, the, the local plan. and uh, Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, that's really just giving us uh, an opportunity to... Uh, to look at the city centre in new, uh, in new circumstances. And it's very, very much more flexible than the, uh, than any previous plans have been. Um, basically saying to, um, to any developers or anybody wishing to invest in, in the city centre, well look, uh, we, we can be quite flexible about this. Um, we're not saying you have to build your, um, your office block there or you have to build your hotel over there. Uh, if you've got other ideas, we'll we'll sit down and talk about it. Uh, so flexibility is the name of the game, really, these days. Right, and it is hoped, or a lot of people are hoping, that maybe we could have a, a multiplex cinema based actually within the city. Uh, I think a lot of people would like to see that. Yes, indeed. I mean, we we have plans uh, for that. We um, we hope if we get our uh, our. Um, uh, plans for the new food market off the ground and incidentally we, we put in uh, to the uh, uh, National Heritage Lottery Fund we've, we've just applied for uh, up to £4 million pounds for the development of uh, our new food market if that if we get if we get that then uh, we'll be creating the new food markets and uh, the current market hall and car park will be demolished and we have got cinema operators who are very keen, actually, to uh, to uh, to actually um, put a cinema in mm. that uh, in that particular location. Because I, again, sometimes uh, you, you you don't think of this, but I, I've spoken to quite a few people who, with children, if they want to go to a cinema and they've got to go by bus down to the docks, uh, down to the capital centre, it, it mounts up on the evening out. Where if there was a cinema in the city, they yeah. could walk to. Yeah. Plus the fact it would bring people into the city because oh, I think that's yes. another proposal, yeah. isn't it? The council would like to see more people, more families using the city in the evenings. Oh yes, you're you're, you're absolutely right. Um, 
I mean, if you're not uh, into alcohol, <laughs> yes. uh, if you don't uh, particularly uh, want to to have an alcoholic drink, okay, you can go to uh, you can go to the pub and have a non-alcoholic drink with your friends. Uh, as some of my friends do, uh, they don't uh, they don't drink beer, uh, but you know they'll they'll come with us and and they'll have an orange juice or something. But it's it's there really isn't a lot for people who who don't like sitting in pubs. Mm. Uh, there's the Harris, of course, which is a wonderful resource, and they offer fantastic uh, 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 workshops for for, for children. Uh, but beyond that, there isn't a huge amount, really. Uh, there's the Guild Hall, of course. Uh, but a cinema would be f- fantastic for families. Cinema and more restaurants, obviously, because with cinema, there comes um, associated restaurants, always. Mm. Yes, and, and as we say, it's bringing people into the city and making well, that's right, the yes. lifeblood of the city in an evening, yeah. particularly on summer nights when we've got such a beautiful park, Havenham Park, yes, on the yes, doorstep. It could be a beautiful place to come with yeah, the family. It's, it's, it's so frustrating because you can see all these opportunities, yes. um, but it just takes so long to get things happening. And I know people out there probably think, well, get on and do it. <laughs> You know, it's unfortunately it's no longer up to the council these days. We're basically skint, and yes. uh, you know we have to rely on the private sector to come in and, and do a lot of this work. And they have got to have the confidence that their development will be profitable. And uh, you know, I, uh, I I see developers all the time and investors all the time, and I, and I say to them, well, look, you know, you do come in to press, and we've got the tremendous opportunities. Uh,